Okay. <coughs> Good day, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us and welcome to Akbar MHI Bandung Guest Lecture Event, which will discuss today's event, encouraging youth to build up career in the hospitality industry abroad. We would also like to thank Mr. Zoltan Soltiki as the main speaker today, uh, Mr. Yun Wahyu as Vice Director of Akpar and Hai Bandung, Ms. Sara Rabasari as Secretary of Diploma Program Akpar and Hai Bandung, as well as Mr. Idam Sakti as moderator today for being able to join us on today's event. My name is Kalitan Hadi as the MC for today's event. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few points and today's rundown so everyone would uh, be able to understand how to participate in today's event. Today's rundown would consist of the opening and welcoming speech from the director of Akbar and Hai Bandung, the material that will be delivered by the spokesman, Mr. Zoltan, the Q&A session, as well as the group photo and closing. The rules and points participants are required to abide consist of number one participants must use their real names in accordance with the names in Akbar and high attendance list number two participants are required to mute the sound during the course of the lecture so that the delivery of the material by our speaker can be delivered properly number three participants must turn on their cameras and seat neatly and pay attention to the room ethics and aesthetics during the meeting. Number four, participants can ask questions during the Q&A session via chat feature by the first writing down their names, questions briefly and clearly, or directly by raising your hand. Number five, fill in the attendance on the link provided by the operator because the certificate will be sent through email that is registered through the attendance form today. To open this event, I invite Mr. Yun Wahyu as the Vice Director of Akbar and Hai Bandung to give a speech on opening the guest lecture event today. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Okay. First of all, we'd like to thank you to Mr. Jordan Soli, as the hotel manager for the Red Hotel in United Kingdom. And welcome to our seminar. Thank you very much for the time that uh, you're willing to share for the opportunity to encourage our students in order to know what is the situation for paying a pro? As we know, the hospitality based on cultural event, which we work on the tourism industry. Tourism basically is interchange of the culture. We are connecting through the culture and with the culture, we are becoming together. So the tourism is universal. In the tourism, we didn't see the color of the people, the language they spoke, also the Uh, the shape that you are on, which everybody is using, but through the tourism, we are connecting with the attitude shown in what we dream. So, based on tourism, we are interchange the good of our behavior. 
if we carry each other, if the tourism can make the world together. Since we are studying or interesting in tourism, we should know, we should to try to find, to know what is the habit and the character in every location. In this opportunity, we are very uh, glad, happy, and thankful that Mr. Dalton from uh, United Kingdom that willing to share, to interchange, to get, share what is the tourism, how that he can involve in this the world of hospitality and now is become the hotel manager for the best hotel and opening at the door of the culture in United Kingdom. So use this opportunity get the encouragement up to know more about the world of tourism. Well, not further more that we are officially open it that the session hopefully that we get the maximum benefit to all of us. And thanks again to Mrs. Dogan and we give the opportunity to explore you about tourism. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Mr. Yun Wahyu for the opening speech. Now without further ado, we will turn the time over to our moderator, Mr. Idam Sakti Wibawa. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, not to mention, thank you for Research and Community Service and Culinary Department for holding this event. And then once again, thank you, very, uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, I really appreciate the introduction, and then it's an honor to be part with all of you today. Our topic today is encouraging youth to build up career in hospitality industry abroad. And our speaker today is Mr. Zoldan uh, Soltitsky. He is a teacher at school for adult and postgraduate in Hungary. He was a manager at Z Hotel Piccadilly, London, and Tottenham Court Road. And now he is a manager at Z Hotel Bed, United Kingdom. Before we start, let me explain how you can talk to us during the guest lecture. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions today by typing your question into the chat room, by mentioning your name and your class first. You may send your question at any time during the presentation. We will collect this and address them during the Q&A session and at the end of the day today presentation. Shall we begin? I would uh, I would like to introduce our today's speaker. Uh, please welcome Mr. Zoltan Soltiski as a hotel manager from Z Hotel Bed United Kingdom. Mr. Zoltan, we invite you to to deliver your material, please. Thank you. First of all, uh, ooh, ooh, just Good afternoon, everyone. I, I hope that you can hear me. Um, is the connection good? Okay. So first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is going to be this presentation, uh, which uh, I'm going to share my screen and um, 
it's going to be about uh, being abroad uh, and um, try to encourage you guys to to uh, get work, uh, get out uh, uh, from Indonesia. Not because uh, it is uh, it is a lovely country. I dearly love Indonesia, but the world is big, the world is wide, and there are so many opportunities uh, to take on. Uh, worldwide as well, especially with your uh, educational background, you can do so, and uh, it can be really beneficial for you. So let me just uh, scan, uh, uh, share my screen, and uh, we gonna start. Sorry, I'm really bad with technicality. <laughs> Okay, so uh, today's session as uh, speakers and MCs uh, uh, were telling, it's about uh, encouraging you guys to build up a career in the hospitality industry abroad. It's going to be through a personal experience as uh, myself, um, not uh, originally from the United Kingdom, uh, but we're going to go into that. So, as you can see, I was born in Hungary. Uh, I was born in Hungary, and uh, and I always been uh, uh, taught, and I was brought up as a broad-minded person. We're gonna we're gonna go there. Why it is really important? But just a little bit of background for you to to understand why it's important to to be a broad-minded person. <clears throat> Uh, so I used to dance from uh, the age of six. Uh, I used to do traditional uh, Hungarian dance, and I was doing it until I was 30. Uh, in this uh, time period, I had loads of opportunities to go abroad and to meet with other cultures and uh, meet with other people, uh, which is really important. Uh, to do so because then you can meet cultures and you can understand them better, you can understand the people better. And as my chosen path uh, in my life was hospitality, it, it was really beneficial. As I grew up, I have studied in different, uh, different schools, uh, different uh, sectors. Uh, I, I used to study to be an electric technician. Uh, I became electric technician, but then I went uh, to university, and uh, since I was dancing and I was interested in cultures and folklore uh, itself, I uh, studied as a cultural anthropologist. Uh, when I was in my university, uh, I, I was always fascinated, basically, uh, about cultures, and I had uh, uh, the opportunity and the gift uh, to be uh, a scholarship student uh, in your lovely country. Uh, I got the Dharmasi Squad Scholarship uh, in the year of 2004-05, uh, scholar year of 2004-05, uh, which, uh, which one was an amazing experience, uh, a life-changing, I would say, experience. Um, since that time, um, very much in, in, in love with your beautiful uh, cultural diversity and uh, with uh, your people and with your nation. Uh, I spent uh, uh, quite a uh, quite a time. It was like uh, nine nine months, eight nine months. Uh, I spent the first half of it in Sumatra, in Sumatra Barat, to be special, uh, specific in Palembang, 
and I uh, learned dance over there. And uh, then I moved to Bandung, the church university called to Bandung, and I studied in the local city. Uh, unfortunately, due to a little injury which I caused myself, I had to come home uh, a bit earlier than, uh, uh, than the end of the scholar year. When I came back, I went back actually to Hungary, uh, I finished my studies in the university and um, and I started to teach. Started to teach cultural anthropology for adults, and I started to teach uh, dance for kids. So this this is a little quote which I really love. Uh, I hope that all uh, all, uh, all of you can see it. It's uh, the part to build up a mindset. Uh, what is really suitable uh, for hospitality. They had a, a lovely uh, tutor in Indonesia, and uh, that was her catchphrase, basically, uh, whenever uh, there was a little downtime for us, uh, we didn't let it down or, or homesick or, or didn't understand the culture. Uh, she always said, don't take it personal, it's cultural, and she was really, really uh, true and, uh, and, and she really got uh, grab the, the base of it. Uh, it is really important. Whatever happens uh, abroad uh, with you, you have to always think that it's just cultural. Okay. I know that uh, this this speech started from really far, and not and uh, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, I wanted to do it and and started from a little bit far. Uh, just to just to have you some background uh, um, how how someone can build up uh, a broad-minded personality, yeah. So uh, let's get into our main topic. So it's hospitality and why hospitality, guys? It's uh, our industry is a really really beautiful industry. Uh, hospitality is about taking care of our guests. It doesn't matter what level we're taking care of our guests. If, if you are a receptionist, if you are a hotel manager, if you are a duty manager, uh, if you are a front office manager, if you are a housekeeping uh, 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 maid uh, who is cleaning rooms, if you are working in a kitchen, it doesn't matter. Our common goal with all of my staff over here in the hotel and everywhere else in the world, I guess, our common goal is to look after our guests and make them happy and welcome them in our own level. Okay, the industry itself, it is, uh, as you all know, it is a multi, a multi billion pound or multi billion dollar uh, business through, uh, throughout the world. So it is uh, a really booming business. Obviously now because of the pandemic, it's, it's not booming, but it will come back. Because people love to travel and love to uh, visit different countries and meet with different cultures. Uh, hence, it's a really good business and a really good opportunity uh, to take on. We have major segments of, uh, of the hospitality industry. Um, the easiest one, uh, or just let's, let's, uh, let's divide it to four different uh, uh, segments or aspects. Um, I would say one of them is travel and tourism. The other one is uh, food and beverage. And it's accommodation, obviously, and then uh, recreational entertainment. So you have to you have to choose your own path. And once you've chosen your path, um, just take on, on with it full heartedly, and uh, and uh, make sure that you build up a career in it. 
which means that um, you know, the courier is to develop, to develop day by day. Uh, I'm developing myself day by day. I have my mentors as well, uh, just because I'm managing a, uh, managing a hotel on a daily basis, it doesn't mean that I don't have someone mentoring me and helping me on this path. It's going to happen with you guys as well. Okay. Um, the most popular of these uh, four uh, uh, sectors which we've been talking about uh, are travel and tourism and accommodation. So these sectors are uh, beneficial, uh, they are well paid, and they are rewarding. And if you do uh, your uh, duties uh, well, then you can develop and you can build up a really good career. You know. To be fair, opportunities are really, really, really endless. And uh, to make the most out of it, is just only about you, about your mentality. That's why we started from the beginning. Uh, uh, the beginning we started from really far, uh, just to just to show you how how important is it to build up a, a growth-minded personality and mentality. So let's go to the next uh, slide which we're going to talk about travel and tourism industry. Uh, travel and tourism um, industry is to travel and work abroad at the same time is working in a cruise ship example. That is travel and tourism is a really, really, really good opportunity if you take this cruise ship. Um, they, they are amazing, uh, amazing uh, floating cities. Um, on a, uh, on, a, on a board of a cruise ship, uh, you will travel to the far end of the world. You're going to visit ports, you're going to visit uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, countries. You have the opportunity to do so. So when you are on board uh, of a ship um, for at least like six months or a year, it's a really good opportunity uh, to make a little fortune out of it, you can save loads of money. Because if you think of it, your accommodation and your meal, uh, like, a, uh, like a food, uh, is provided. Everything is provided for you. So a lot of my friends, um, I will talk about later, a lot of my friends uh, were taken on to that opportunity and they build up a really nice career uh, in the travel and tourism uh, uh, industry. Um, another advantage of this uh, connections, uh, 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 another advantage of, uh, of this um, um, uh, ship experience of working in, uh, you can make amazing connections, amazing connections uh, with people, um, and uh, you're going to be able uh, to use them when you finally come ashore and start your own business or just get a job in a business, uh, like a, a hotel, for example. You're going to have loads of connections, and they're going to know you, and they're going to help you out. Okay. So the if you if you would like to grow up, I mean develop yourself. If you'd like to grow up on a on a ship, uh, there are millions of possibilities to do so. Um, cruise like companies, they they do really indeed invest the time and tremendous amount of money uh, to train you guys to to make sure that you are the best. Because, as we said, or as we established in, a, in the beginning, it is a multi billion pound or multi billion dollar business worldwide. And of course, uh, once you're having like four, 
6,000 people on board, you want your staff to be on the top of everything and to know everything. So they're going to encourage you to take on to these uh, 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 opportunities and to seek promotion. It's beneficial for the, uh, for the cruise line companies as well. But most importantly, it's beneficial for you and for your, your growth. Okay, so most crew members are getting into uh, uh, the cruise ships um, as uh, like it's an entry level employees. Um, but if you are ambitious enough, and if you would like to grow in this industry, then you can do so. Because they're going to help you, and you can rise the ranks. And you can you can just make a, a really big living out of uh, being on a cruise ship and then later settle down on land, uh, for example, in a hotel. Okay, members of the staff are really encouraged to to embark uh, on regular training courses, they apply for promotion, and uh, they get it uh, most of the time when they're applying and their background studies and trainings are done. Uh, they do get promoted, and it's a really good opportunity, as I said. Of course, cruise ships can be hardship sometimes. So working on a cruise ship is, I don't know how much you know about that, but working on a cruise ship is not a deal. Of course, it, it sounds really good if you think that you don't have to pay your accommodation, you don't have to pay your food, uh, you don't have to on your uh, days off or uh, off duty, you can go to entertain yourself uh, to certain uh, you know, places. It's a really good thing. It, uh, it sounds really good if you think it. But you also have some some uh, drawbacks. For example, half year, one year, uh, it is hard to to get disconnected from uh, the people you love. But I will tell you something interesting that is like me, for example, being a foreigner in, in the UK is the same for me. It is hard that I'm disconnected from my loved ones. So cruise ships can be the same, or they they sound good in one uh, one side. They are uh, they they have the drawbacks, but still, uh, despite these uh, little drawbacks, for example, homesick, or if you if you uh, think of your living quarters, if you uh, thinking of your. Uh, uh, way of uh, living on a uh, ship or uh, the style of um, the accommodation, they can be really cramped. But let me tell you something. First, when I came to England, I was living in a shared house. Uh, so the conditions were cramped as well. So don't, so don't, uh, don't uh, uh, think that it is a bad a uh, uh, bad part uh, in your life to choose uh, a cruise ship, for example. Uh, it's just the same if you go grow on the first time. Obviously, as you getting higher on the ranks, uh, you're getting uh, more uh, benefits, and uh, uh, more benefits comes with bigger uh, space, uh, bigger personal space. I mean, uh, it comes with uh, Oops, it comes with a bigger uh, uh, responsibility as well. But it has, uh, when you're climbing up uh, the ranks, it has its own opportunities uh, 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 as well. Okay? So, of course, you don't get the, the luxury uh, of uh, going home after your share, but it has other benefits. So let's talk about my favorite part of this uh, hospitality sector, which is accommodation, which are the hotels, 
uh, which had a bed and breakfast, uh, the lovely, uh, the lovely uh, five star fort was uh, the coastal uh, uh, villas accommodation. I will tell you uh, through my own journey is not because I like to talk about myself, but is because is because uh, as a foreigner being in a foreign country, uh, I might shed some light on certain drawbacks or certain uh, advantages uh, throughout my personal experience. So, uh, yeah, let's start with, uh, yes, it is possible to develop. Yes, indeed, it is possible to develop. Um, in 2010, um, uh, I was uh, firstly introduced to this uh, industry, hospitality, uh, when I decided uh, to leave my own country. It is a big decision. You might think uh, to do so, to leave your own country and uh, go and try your luck in a different country or just uh, even uh, even on a different uh, island uh, within Indonesia. It can be really hard. But let's go back uh, to, uh, to the slide. So yes, I have decided to move home and I left Hungary and settled down in England. Uh, I used to live in a really lovely but small city and I it went into a really, uh, really buzzing and multicultural uh, capital of uh, England, in London. So, after growing up uh, in a small city, uh, uh, getting to uh, uh, 10 million, uh, I know, I know it's uh, smaller than Jakarta, and uh, it's uh, just like a size of a couple of Asian cities. I know. But uh, it can be a cultural shock. Uh, it was definitely a cultural shock for me. Um, for me, uh, it was too big. It was uh, ununderstandable, and uh, and it took me a couple of years to get used to it. Let's uh, say something uh, <clears throat> really honest thing. To work in general. On a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day uh, -day basis, uh, work is hard, especially if you would like to grow and if you would like to develop. To work in a business, it's really hard. But let's be honest: to work abroad is even harder. You are disconnected uh, from your loved ones. You are disconnected from your own culture. Even me being European, go to a different European country, it's still different customs, different cultural uh, backgrounds of the people. Uh, they do uh, uh, things totally differently from uh, my uh, home town or my home nation. So it is hard, but through determination and through commitment, you can build a career. Good evening, I did. So you can do it as well. It's just totally up to you. So I, I told you guys I had an uh, 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 educational background uh, of being an uh, electric technician and being a cultural anthropology, being a teacher. But uh, obviously, uh, when you Go abroad um, if you have this sort of uh, background, but you don't because you're already in the hospitality industry. I didn't have that advantage. You do have that advantage. Always think of that. You already chosen a path for yourself, and that is a really good advantage point. I didn't have that advantage. Uh, I started in the kitchen to wash dishes. Uh, me being a teacher before. Um, having class uh, classes uh, and uh, and uh, uh, doing trainings um, uh, for my students, I started to wash dishes. What? But uh, I grew up, and that's, we're gonna come back to the previous slides. Yes, it's 
is indeed possible to grow if you have the determination. That's why we have to have a growth mindset. Just take advantage of everything uh, thrown uh, your path of your journey. Yeah. So uh, I became a supervisor within one year. And within another year, an assistant restaurant manager. Uh, it is a really big growth. In this industry, if something is good, is that you can grow up fast. You can have a career uh, pretty quickly. Uh, is just, as I said so many times, and I will, it's totally up to you, your mindset your determination. Um, when I was uh, uh, a restaurateur, uh, managing uh, restaurants, uh, I did a couple of uh, 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 jobs within different companies. Uh, why I'm mentioning it, once again, is not just to talk about myself, is to uh, let you know, guys, that you can, you can change your... Once you, once you are in the industry, you don't have to get stuck in one place. You can change work, you can change job, and you can change job roles. And it's really easy since you already have uh, your experience, your background studies, which you do now, and your experience, and it's going to be really easy for you. Okay? Um, they trusted me to open three different restaurants, and Tens of people, uh, probably roughly around 60, 70 people I used to train, uh, without any hospitality background. Imagine you guys, what you have in your pre study, you're going to have a lot better opportunity. If I could do that, that's why I'm mentioning my stuff. If I, if I could do that, you can do it, and it's easy. So, if we go to uh, accommodation, well, you can you can always choose uh, what sort of uh, um, uh, within the industry, what sort of style you like, and what sort of uh, style of hotel or accommodation you would like to work for. It doesn't matter work for as what as what job role, but you can decide. You can either uh, work for an independent uh, uh, chain, or you can uh, you work for a worldwide known uh, chain. Okay, so for example, our hotel, Set Hotel, is a British-owned uh, hotel chain. It's a really small, but a really quickly developing one. We had only uh, four. Four hotels when I joined five years ago. We had four hotels. Now we have 13. So it was a really fast growing British uh, uh, hotel chain. You can choose a worldwide known brand like Clinton, Intercontinental, and all other brands that just need to name. It's up to you. What, what is your path if you choose? Um, a worldwide brand, uh, you have the opportunity and possibility uh, to get relocated. So you can you can uh, you can work a variety of locations around big cities, around uh, coastal areas, uh, around, uh, for example, world heritage site. Uh, Bath is a world heritage site. Uh, okay, I know I'm working for an independent company, but still, sometimes you can have a lovely opportunity and uh, go to uh, work in a work heritage site, for example. Okay. Also, um, you will get to tackle um, new challenges uh, every single day. You're going to meet with different people. You're going to make different connections from all over the world. Um, I personally have connections uh, in a couple of continents because of the, the daily meetings, uh, the daily greetings of, uh, of our guests. Uh, 
day returning guests, uh, they come in from South Africa, uh, from uh, South and North America, from Asia as well. We have um, Indonesians, for example, uh, actually uh, the lovely family, they, and they come to our whole country to uh, studying in our university of art. And they come in every three, four months. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, not now, but uh, normally they come in every three, four months to visit the daughter. So it's just an example. You can have pretty good connection from all around the world. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, my hotel. Uh, it's just um, it's, uh, uh, experience in a home. Once again, to show a path and try to encourage you to my unexperienced background uh, through, uh, through this uh, experience, how you can fulfill it if you're determined to do so. So I spent five years in catering industry, and then, um, then I, uh, I said that I want to step back. I, I, uh, I had a really good time in catering. Uh, it's not uh, really for my personality. My personality is really talkative, uh, uh, chatty, like in connection uh, with people. But that is a personal preference. Um, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't fulfill. I, that's how I felt. I couldn't fulfill myself uh, because as you grow up uh, uh, from a, a restaurant supervisor to a manager, you're not going to have the opportunity on a daily basis to talk to guests, talk to customers, and um, and to get to know them as much. It's totally vice versa uh, in uh, in a hotel industry. So I said that okay, um, I, I want to uh, step back. Why I'm mentioning it to you once again, not to talk about myself, but to encourage you in the future. If you see an opportunity to fulfill your dreams, don't be afraid to, let's say, demote yourself or take a step back. Um, I remember my area manager uh, back at the time uh, who uh, did an interview with me when I uh, applied for a receptionist job. Uh, she was really surprised. Like you are, you are an assistant manager in a in a in a, in a restaurant, uh, in, in a food restaurant. Uh, why would you come to work for us for less money uh, uh, as a as a as a receptionist? Uh, my plan not to not quit being a receptionist, but to develop myself and get to get to be a duty manager and then a hotel manager. And I guarantee you that uh, within one year, I'm going to do so. She was smiling, of course, because, you know, on job interviews, uh, you really have to show enthusiasm and determination. And she thought that this just because, uh, because it's just a common practice to do so. But I proved her wrong clearly. I failed to, failed to get promoted within one year. I have to tell you. It took me 15 months. But nearly within one year, I did it. And she was the first one to congratulate. Uh, because uh, if you have the determination once again, and uh, if you want to take uh, on a challenge, then don't be afraid to take a step back and develop yourself from that level. Of course, you're going to have an advantage already know uh, certain parts of, of managing things, so you can take advantage uh, of your uh, um, work experience. So, uh, development opportunities. There are millions of development opportunities within our industry. Don't so, Just to give you some examples, uh, after, uh, for example, after being uh, uh, promoted uh, uh, myself uh, to a higher position, and once again, it's good sometimes to take a step back. And I said, okay, uh, because I don't know why, but in a hotel industry, uh, how they think uh, that uh, working on the night, 
is not as important to work on the date. You don't need that many uh, guests. Uh, you don't uh, build up that much, that much relationship. You're not dealing with today uh, issues. But guess what? You can learn a lot more things. For example, uh, you can learn the financial side. You can have an experience how to deal with uh, uh, how to deal with uh, uh, really really uh, interesting and challenging guests. Because during the month, people are uh, whom you meeting meeting with are normally a little bit more. Let's uh, put it in a nice way. Lose. Um, they already have a day. Uh, probably they visited some bars uh, or restaurants, and they when they coming back to the hotel, they are a little bit more loose. So you run into a lot more interesting and challenging uh, experience uh, than during the day. But it's a really good opportunity uh, to learn from it. It's, it's, it's a really, really, really good opportunity to do so. Okay. So after after uh, challenge myself to to do uh, uh, do understand the financial uh, part of the business because most of the and once again if uh, if you would like to develop you have to know um, a little bit the background of the business uh, and uh, you have to have a mentor for yourself we're going to talk about that later that part and with your with your mentor you have to make a plan. My plan was because uh, I wanted to be a hotel manager. I wanted to manage uh, a hotel on a daily basis. Um, and the background of the business is during the night because all of the reports, financial reports, and everything is made during the night, uh, at least in my company, but I know that other companies are doing the same thing. Uh, so to understand the business side, of the business, the business side of the whole the financial side. It's a really good thing uh, to to work in the night, for example. Uh, so after a year, um, I went back to days, and because of my previous, uh, because of my previous experience working on a days, and after working at night. Then it comes to opportunities, taking opportunities, and uh, get, uh, having a plan for yourself how you would like to develop. Uh, because of this previous uh, uh, experience, they trusted me to open uh, a hotel and train staff as a as a chief manager. So I uh, I opened a, a hotel in London, uh, which was a really lovely hotel, and then uh, since I always wanted to. As I told to you, I'm from a small city. Uh, I always wanted to uh, uh, be and work and live in a smaller city, uh, not in a uh, uh, 10 million plus uh, uh, capital of England. I decided to open a hotel in Bath and uh, work over here, which is if you like to do so, or if you like to say so. It is again, maybe uh, it can see it is a step back from being in a capital to go to a smaller city. It seems like a step back, maybe not that much growing possibility because you are cut off uh, from the main hub. But trust me on that one. Um, all of these type of step backs, what you take, you have to judge. And uh, I know that you are smart guys, and I know that you're going to judge uh, good, especially if you have a mentor. We're going to go uh, that section uh, later on. Uh, with your with your mentor, with your uh, with your uh, uh, friend to talk to, you can make this decision. And sometimes a step back is just a step back in order to reach. The summit of your uh, path or your career. Uh, 
If you wouldn't mind, I would just uh, quickly uh, introduce the whole of it, just uh, two slides, uh, just to just to know what is uh, um, what is an, uh, 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 um, another style of hotel. I would say a different style of hotel um, looks like. Uh, we have a really unique style. Actually, I'm in a hotel room right now uh, because I'm in a hotel and uh, presenting this uh, presentation for my hotel. Um, so our our style are quite unique, uh, even within uh, and amongst uh, the hotels uh, in the UK. We have, as you can see, we have really, really, really small rooms. Uh, once again, there's a connection point uh, to the aforementioned uh, cruise ships because our rooms are look like a cruise ship a cabin. Really small room designed uh, to, to accommodate in the best possible way uh, it can be. So uh, you have all uh, luxurious items, uh, handcrafted bed and everything else, bought in a really small package. I don't want to talk too much about it. If you would like to read the text, then you can uh, you can uh, do so. Uh, is another one of the it's the bowl tea bag. Okay, and just to show you what the what sort of uh, uh, style we're doing over here. Okay, so we have uh, we have a compact compact luxury as, uh, as I said. Um, we have like really affordable prices during the week, which are not that much. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, given the circumstances that it's England, these these are really 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 um uh, compet uh, competitive prices yeah okay but as i said i don't want to uh, uh spend too much time on the whole thing itself uh room facilities uh we have little things in a in a in a room uh which is uh, uh important for the guests uh, to accommodate them and to welcome them okay and one thing which to our knowledge all this is what our dog. And this is a good thing. If you build up your own business, for example, if you choose uh, uh, your own path in this in industry, uh, come up with ideas. But the idea which no one else had. For example, every afternoon from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we give in free cheese. And free wine. Imagine that we should be free wine for three hours to all of our guests. It's it's just a, something which no one else does in England. Or if someone started to do it, it was after it was introduced by our hotel chain. So why it's uh, why it's uh, important because just to just to uh, encourage you to think uh, from out of the box and try to come up with an idea when you try to uh, when you are working in a in a in the industry and especially when you try to uh, uh, build up uh, your own business in the industry okay uh, now if I may I would uh, like to uh, Say something about uh, the possible uh, problematics uh, with uh, working abroad. Uh, what could be the, the hardship point of uh, working abroad? We're gonna once again. I would relate to my journey, but it's all about you guys. Okay, so when you arrive to a foreign country. Okay. Uh, you might struggle a little bit with the local language. Okay. Even though if uh, in school, uh, private sessions, uh, you learn, uh, for example, English, like I was studying it in a school, but when I came to England, it was really hard, really, really hard to understand people over here. First of all, when you when you learn language in your uh, in your uh, 
um, hometown. Uh, you learn it mostly from someone who is not a native. If you have the possibility and the gift that you can learn language from someone who is a native speaker, then you are in a really good position. Otherwise, you can struggle. But you know what? I would say, don't worry about that. Language is just a little thing. Uh, you can make lingual mistakes or linguistic mistakes. No problem at all. The most important thing, never doubt yourself, but always try to uh, uh, encourage yourself uh, to learn. Okay. If you make a mistake, if someone is smiling at you and laughing at you, for example, don't take it personal. There's nothing wrong with that. Be sure what you want to say and just say it. It's all right. It's nothing wrong. My English is not perfect. I'm still working in England. And I do my day-to-day -day thing. So, but this is, this is uh, just up to your mindset. And what I would like to encourage you guys that build up a mindset when you are not afraid to talk. Someone is laughing at you. Let it be. That person who is laughing at you most probably is a native. Why are they smiling at you and why are they laughing at you? Believe me, 90% of those people, they don't speak any other language. That's why they, they laugh and smile at you. But guess what? In order to speak your native language, bare minimum, your native language, and English, for example. So you order to speak two languages, that person laughing at you just speaks one. That's an interesting thing to think it, uh, think it through, isn't it? Especially English speakers and English speaking countries, uh, they they, uh, they are a little bit challenging because it's a worldwide language. It's a language of uh, many, many uh, 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 industries. Uh, you know, the IT to, through hospitality and to, you can continue the line. Uh, of course, this is an international language. And if you are not correct, they, in best case scenario, they're going to correct you. If they correct you, Always try to keep in mind how they corrected you. What was that? As I said, don't take it personal. Learn from it. So my advice is, uh, within language uh, and uh, build up a career abroad, with regards to language, always try to have local friends and learn the language from them. Because uh, if you just have uh, your um, own nation uh, uh, friends uh, abroad, for example, when I came uh, to, to England, I had Hungarian uh, uh, friends, and then we, let, we used to live in a share house, as I said, and um, it was all Hungarian. So, okay, during the job, uh, eight hours, maybe a day, I, struggled with my English. But then when I went home, switched to switched to Hungarian, I couldn't deal with myself, believe me. But uh, if you have local friends, uh, and I give uh, some examples and I will tell you what are those. If you have local friends, you can learn uh, expressions, local expressions. Uh, for example, I put Abba Butcher. This is something which you do. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. If you don't uh, know the, for example, this one is uh, from the Cockney dialect, uh, which is in London. Um, uh, it's a specific part of London. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but have a butcher it is, uh, is Cockney for have a look. I'm not going to, like, have a look. Like, look at that or, or uh, oh. Did you see that or something? So have a look. Yeah. Uh, it is a, this Cockney language is a rhyming slang 
uh, language. Uh, they referring to uh, the butcher butcher's hook, you know, where they put the meat on in the shop. Uh, they put the meat on in these hooks, and it's rhyming uh, to the look. Look, who it is, how it rhymes, yeah. So, but this is why I'm why I'm mentioning it because this is a local expression. Uh, it's important to have local friends to learn these things from them because you can run into uh, uh, interesting situations during your work, during your life abroad when you don't really understand the local expression and that's why it's important to have local friends or for example girlash in the west country where i'm living now i speak english but i never knew was girlash girlash is like very good it's like amazingly good that's why it's girlash but uh, but this is specific to this uh, 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 side of the country so once again have some local friends and uh, learn the language from them to be fair in general people are really nice and they're going to help you and wherever you go all over the world uh, i've been to loads of countries as i said once again the purpose was not to talk about me talk about experience uh i've been to loads of countries all of all around the world um Uh, found out for myself that uh, to try to uh, help you out with uh, loads of things. Yeah. So um, when I was in Indonesia, for example, I have friends over there, and they uh, tried to help me with uh, with the language. Unfortunately, it was so long time ago. That I already forgot most of my Indonesians. So sorry about that. Otherwise, uh, mostly God. So sorry about that. Um, uh, from uh, you as well, guys. If you have in your workplace, new workplace, uh, someone native, always try to talk to that person and ask uh, that person to help you out grammatically uh, and uh, they're going to do so and they're going to help you uh, because they want you to speak correctly with them. So, yeah. try to learn the language from that it doesn't matter where you go Try to do so. That's my advice. Uh, we're talking about now about uh, um, mentoring or choose a mentor to yourself. Uh, it is pretty important um, to choose a mentor for yourself, and uh, um, that person can help you um, with your uh, career, uh, with your development. Uh, to develop uh, um, yourself uh, within your job, it should it okay. you to choose your mentor. If you're lucky enough, uh, then you can choose a boss, and then uh, or your leader, like team leader, um, not like boss, like uh, the employer, but like uh, like your close uh, team leader. And uh, he or she can be your uh, your um, mentor on your field of work. There's uh, a figure who who is leading by example. If you choose a person to ve to develop you, then that person uh, you share uh, his or her knowledge with you. And it's going to be, benefit, uh, be beneficial for you. That's going to benefit you uh, in the long term. Um, the best leaders are always, um, uh, this is what you have to do first. Uh, want you to develop and uh, want to support you and want to give all of their knowledge to you. 
just a just a um, a bad leader would. Or her. Um, do some jobs for me. Small thing, but then they learn in it. And then that's 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 when it comes to development uh, for them. Uh, when on a job interview, when they apply for the uh, manager. Something when when uh, when this job uh, job interview comes, they can ask them. Okay, so what uh, what uh, uh, part of the management do you you know? And they know loads loads of it, loads of different sectors of it. So try to choose someone. Look out for for these uh, these people who are willing to share their knowledge with you, and uh, who are natural born leaders, and then you can follow them and you can develop really easily. Um, the only thing, uh, other thing which I would uh, say on this topic, um, there was a little part about uh, the cruise ships and uh, uh, about the travel and the uh, leisure industry itself. Uh, my personal mentor, who means uh, my um, general manager over here, a uh, really close uh, friend of mine used to be and used to <laughs> to be yeah, used to be a Britain a cruise uh, and uh, he used to be a front office uh, manager on a, a 4,500 and later on a 6,000 passenger ship, cruise ship. And um, that section was uh, from him, and he was really uh, happy to share his uh, little quotes about uh, about that. Okay, uh, his name is Edgar, and uh, he has uh, this huge experience. And um, and the interesting thing, uh, if uh, if you choose a mentor, uh, one last thing, if you choose a mentor. Uh, you that that person is uh, going to share the, the full knowledge of uh, of him or her with you. But believe me, that person will learn from you as well, or vice versa. Then, because because you have a knowledge, you have a background, you have a knowledge uh, already. What you are learning now from the school, it doesn't matter what field of, of the hospitality. You learn the knowledge, which is a really useful, really important knowledge. And you can share maybe that knowledge uh, to your mentor. So, for example, if uh, just given an example, since I was working in restaurant, when it comes to our hotels at B, uh, they rely on me to to come up with ideas and things because I used to work in restaurants. So this is what I was uh, trying to tell you guys that if you already have a background, if you want to develop, you can choose a different path. But if your background, you're going to have a lot better opportunities to grow. Okay, let's uh, have another one. If uh, if you have the knowledge, since you have the knowledge, uh, you have to know your knowledge. Be proud of what you know, but always try to be as humble about it as you can. Don't try to uh, push other people down because they don't have that knowledge. No, you are lucky. You have that knowledge. You work hard for it to get that knowledge. They do not have the opportunity, or they come from a different background. What? Uh, be proud, but be humble about that. Yeah. Any given field uh, uh, of work, talent is really important, but it's more important to be fair that 
how we use English talent. And uh, for example, me because uh, I used to teach, I uh, never, I never heard the lesson to be fair in English. But I used to teach uh, in my native language, and I used to teach uh, loads of people. Uh, some some people says that uh, my talent is to to encourage or to develop people uh, because of the life experience and because of uh, because of uh, um, because of the uh, background of mine. You have the same thing. If you just to know your knowledge and humble about it, always always bear in mind that. Uh, that's a, that's a really lovely uh, quote, uh, which uh, comes from Michael Jordan, the famous basketball player. <laughs> Everyone knows. Uh, talent can win games, but well, teamwork can win championships. So that's why I said, know your talent, or be humble about it, uh, because we are part of a team. Wherever we work, unless you have your own business. Wherever we work, in, we are part of the team. So I'll be proud of your knowledge, but don't forget you're part of the team, and we're working together uh, for a common goal. Okay. There will be times uh, when, because of your previous study, your background, uh, your talent, you will be asked to 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 train someone, to 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 develop someone. On your field of work, try to be the person who we spoke before about. Try to be the person who shared his full knowledge uh, with the trainer and give them your best practices and best advices how to do things. It's good for two reasons, two really simple reasons. One, they're gonna look up on you, and they're gonna accept you as your leader. Second, I already mentioned it. If you have a job uh, scale, once you once you uh, develop someone, and once you share your knowledge with someone, that person can do it. Instead of you, obviously, with you, with the wise of that person, but instead of you, they can do that. So, talent development is all about this share your knowledge, but also uh, make sure that you develop that person. Okay, let's, uh, let's put a little twist on that one. I, I spoke so much about when you develop somebody, when, when you uh, gonna be a leader, yes, but the beginning of your work, you're not gonna be the leader. The beginning of your work, your job, you're gonna be the follower. But guess what? When you when you start with a work experience or in a new place, <clears throat> they're gonna most probably overwhelm you with first of all with new things because of uh, because there are loads of uh, side uh, side uh, things. Uh, which is specific to that hotel, to that uh, kitchen, to that restaurant, to that uh, cruise ship or whatever. And there are loads of side specific things and they're going to overwhelm you with those new information and things. But when your leader, team leader is giving you some extra duties apart from your duties, always take it as a compliment. That's my best advice to you guys. Always take it as a compliment and never take it as a burden. If you take it as a burden, if you take it as a hardship, then you can't really develop yourself. It's like, oh yeah, I already have to do these many things and then once again I have to, I don't know, uh, fill up the, the, the temperature checks uh, uh, on the, on the uh, bridges or freezers. Why should I do that? That's not my job, that's the supervisor. Fair point it is. But then when you're gonna be a supervisor, then you already know what are these uh, it was just an example, what are these um, things uh, uh, which uh, which you will have to do on a daily basis. Okay, so 
when we delegate uh, these little tasks to you, okay, it, it might uh, feel that you have to work double or work uh, work uh, harder than the, the others. Yes, but you learn the knowledge, and you get in the knowledge what the other people who are working less they won't have. They all have in practice. And the best advice, once again, seek for these opportunities. Look out for these opportunities. Try to convince once your job is done or close to done. Uh, try to seek for these opportunities. If you have a good leader, which I'm pretty sure you have uh, in, in, in the school, uh, you have loads of lovely uh, teachers and leaders over there. And in your path of your career, you're going to have good leaders. I'm kind of sure about that. Uh, these leaders will be happy to share their past with you and develop you. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about feedback. Um, I don't know much about uh, about uh, Indonesia uh, with that this regard, but uh, feedback is a vessel to grow, to develop. I know that in, in Northern America, um, Western Europe, um, uh, feedback is, is a very important uh, thing. It is a really important thing because this is how you can develop yourself. Um, it is a really common custom and uh, it is to be taken on board. These feedbacks are to be taken on board and to think of it. Uh, what, what your superiors are telling to you or your teachers now. The same thing basically. Feedback is a good thing. Feedback is never to be taken personally. Oh yeah, he's just telling it to me because he doesn't like it. No, if someone doesn't like you, give it, given given the circumstances that you get a constructive feedback. Um, if someone doesn't like you, wouldn't tell you anything. Wouldn't like you to be developed. But if someone likes you or like you to be Developing yourself and grow up, that person will feed that you. So, my area manager, for example, or the general manager, I have daily basis, on the daily basis. No, this should have been done a really in a different way, or oh, that should be dealt with. This uh, this particular way, it, it doesn't mean that you are not doing your job correctly. No, it just means that they have more experience, and because of their experience, they try to share these things with you and develop you. Okay, so once you've given a feedback. Think over it, learn about it. Never take a feedback personal. Never. Don't take it personally. It's for you. It's for you to grow. If you take it personal, you're going to stuck in the same position and you're never going to grow. Don't take it personal. Uh, we have, uh, I've put this locking phrase over it, uh, over, over here. It is a really old uh, locking saying from the Roman. Uh, 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 ages. And it says to ponder aggressive palm, which is the palm tree grows under pressure. If you imagine a palm tree having loads of coconuts on it, imagine those heavy coconuts, how much they pulling down the leaves and the branches of the palm tree. Still, the palm tree is growing. And it goes and develops itself and grows up. This is the same for you guys. They're going to put you under pressure. But if you can handle the pressure, you can grow in your, in your way of uh, 
uh, in your farm or uh, within the within the industry or within life itself. Well, uh, soon we're gonna uh, end uh, this little uh, 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 slide over here. This is basically just uh, a summary of what we've been talking about, or what I was talking about in the last uh, one hour or so. Uh, it's about my hospitality. Hospitality is uh, it's an amazing industry. It's first of all, it's fun. As we establish it, we meet with loads of different cultures, with loads of different people. And we are here in this industry to make these people happy, to, to achieve uh, uh, happiness and, and, uh, and pleasure to these people with little things, with little things such as they come to celebrate something and you make a special extra touch just to put some uh, flower petals on in a, in a shape of heart on the on the bed because they're celebrating an anniversary these are little things but you can make people's day with it and you can make other human beings happy this is this is an amazing gift which not which most of the industry can't really say but we can it is a really creative industry, really creative industry. Uh, this industry, uh, and especially to grow in this industry, uh, makes you use your brain and use your brain hard because you have to be uh, uh, logical, you have to be practical. Uh, and you have to have the will uh, to develop something new, to find out something new. It's a really creative industry. There's also some possibilities uh, in this industry. The possibility to travel, like for example, on a cruise ship, or if you go to if you go to uh, an international. You can also get to get transferred. And then this opportunity it opens the doors, opens the doors to the world, to different uh, different people, to different cultures, to different languages, uh, different lifestyle, to different love, different family, uh, your choice of family. Yes, it is an amazing industry. It, there is a big place for development in this industry. You don't have to get stuck on one level. I was talking about my life experience because I wanted to make you understand that you don't have to get on the same, uh, stuck on the same level. Sometimes you develop yourself, then you take a step back, and then you're going to start to develop yourself again, maybe take a little step back, and then you develop a game, but you already started from here, from the bottom, and you are over here. This is place for that place is a big opportunity for this Also, it gives you a really good life experience, a life experience, how to deal with different situations, how to deal with uh, things on a daily basis. For example, myself um, uh, being in the hospitality. Uh, industry, uh, either it is catering or, or accommodation, doesn't matter. Being, uh, being uh, or having this uh, 10 years now, uh, 10 years uh, experience makes me appreciate different things on a daily basis. If I'm going into a shop, if I'm talking to a customer service person, if I'm on a sound, uh, someone uh, I'm on a phone with, uh, I don't know, my electricity provider or something. I appreciate different things and also I know how to deal with difficult people because of the experience. And you're going to be able to do so as well. 
it's more boring this industry because you have a variable shift patterns. So your schedule changing is not like a routine that you go to the office nine o'clock, you clock in out at five and you go home. Or you might have to take your work home because you couldn't finish it in the office and you take your work home. In the industry, you have a variable shift uh, pattern, different schedule, whatever suits you. I have a, a really good friend of mine over here. Um, he could have been a, a day manager, uh, managing, the, managing the whole time on the day, just like me. No, he's doing night because he loves night. He just likes to do night. So during the day, he wouldn't feel anything so good. During the night, he is amazingly happy. Variable shift patterns. A clear route in, which means that basically, uh, oh, there's a typo, I just see. Um, <laughs> clear route in, uh, with your educational background, uh, you can have a clear and straight path into, into the industry. And uh, these, uh, these things are, uh, these educational backgrounds or these, uh, uh, these studies are accepted nearly all around the world. Wherever you go, you're going to have a really competitive diploma uh, study background, which uh, you can, educational background, which you can uh, take on jobs and opportunities worldwide. And lastly, but not least, it's a safe bet. Hotel industry or hospitality in general, catering or hotels or cruise ships or anything that uh, within the whole hospitality industry, it's a really safe bet. It is a safe bet because people, as a human nature, they like to. Uh, spend their free time and disposable money, they, they like to spend it for leisure or on leisure. Either if it's a restaurant or it's a hotel or it's a cruise ship, they please themselves with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, these opportunities. People like to travel. They like different places. So it is this industry is a safe path by itself. Because you will always have people going to restaurants or going to hotels. So well, to conclude uh, all things, because I'm afraid this is the last uh, slide of the, of the presentation. To conclude all these things, uh, hospitality is a really good industry. It's a really good uh, place for development, uh, and it is something uh, what you can take on. And with your educational background, you will do so. I'm sure about that. And with determination, you're going to develop and you're going to be successful. Uh, I don't know how we're doing with time, to be fair. Um, I think we did uh, quite well. This was the last slide of mine. And I can see that there are uh, loads of questions already. Now, I might need a little help from uh, um, uh, MCs and interpreters just to, just to help me out with these ones. And uh, I will stop sharing my screen and so I can see you guys. And I will try to answer the questions as much as, uh, as I uh, can. I might need a little help from, from you guys, uh, Kelly. How, how to be present with this? All right, Mrs. Lutton. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, seems to be we have already a few questions. 
uh, and then I also remind to all the students and then all the participants, please don't forget if you have already uh, another question, uh, please uh, mention in the chat. But that's for our second session. But for our first session, uh, there is a few questions and then already uh, summarized. There is uh, eight question from our student. So, Mr. Zoltan, first question from Antonio, and then he's from Kitchen B. He would like to ask you about opinion regarding tourism and security industry uh, during pandemic situation. And then he asking about uh, what is your opinion? your opinion regarding tourism and hospitality industry because uh, currently the situation we have uh, all over the world is a pandemic situation. How do you handle that? Uh, Mr. Zoldan? Uh, Mr. Idam, I think Mr. Zoltan has a problem with the voice. Yeah, I can see the chat. So we're still waiting for the connection. Got it, got it, got it. I got it. Oh, sorry. you have it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear uh, anything. Yeah. Okay, let me repeat one more time, Pak. Yeah. So there will be a first question from our student, and then the question from Antonio, and then he asking about your opinion regarding tourism and hospitality industry during pandemic situation. So uh, your opinion regarding hospitality and tourism industry during pandemic situation. Okay, um, yes. Um, different countries reacted in a different way uh, to this pandemic. Um, for example, in England, uh, our hotel was shut down uh, for four months. Uh, we had a living team uh, who stayed in the hotel uh, to ensure the uh, to ensure the, the security of the hotel because uh, obviously hotels are not built to be shut. Hotels and uh, and the restaurants, but mostly hotels, are built to be uh, open twenty four seven for the guests. So, um, yeah, well, we had uh, a little shutdown over here. Now we are fully operating. Obviously, uh, what Antonio is referring to, I'm pretty sure it's about how I see the future after the pandemic or during the pandemic. Yes, uh, this is a really challenging time for us, uh, for the whole uh, sector. But um, I'm sure that the guest, uh, guests after they can travel once again, uh, they have, they're going to have a, a, a high will to travel. Uh, if I just take, again, for example, a personal thing, fine. Uh, I have my brother in New York. I have my family in Hungary. And I have my fiancé in Indonesia. So I have to travel at least to three different places. So if I just take myself, I will definitely go and stay in a hotel in, okay, not, not in New York, because I'm going to stay with my brother, but, but back home, even back home in Hungary, I'm going to stay in a hotel. Uh, if I'm going to Indonesia, I definitely am I'm not going to stuck in one place, but I'm going to go a little bit uh, to have a holiday as well after this long pandemic. Go to restaurants, and there's just one person. And there are 7 billion people on the planet and those people would like to travel so i don't like uh, i don't uh, like to see uh, our industry uh, going down on train i think uh, it is a really good industry as i said on uh, like in a presentation uh, it is a certain industry and it's a safe bet and i think um, Maybe it's going to be a little bit changed. Um, maybe the habit of the people, how they traveling or how often they traveling or how long distances they traveling to uh, will be changed a little bit, but uh, not that much. Um, it might be different pattern, 
but uh, uh, we don't at least like uh, like we spoke with industry um, contacts who, who know better the industry than even us working in it. Uh, they have loads more experience. They see the financial side. So we we, we spoke with these people, and uh, they don't see it really bad. Uh, as long as we're gonna have a vaccine or a medication. Hopefully that could answer uh, Antonia's question. Uh, second question, I will join with another question. There is a question from Tania and also Alan. Uh, they both asking the same question. And also from Farrell uh, from Kitchen 3B. Uh, they're asking about how do hospital the industry handle the losses during pandemic? Uh, so we know that uh, hospital in, hospital the industry had a massive impact from a uh, pandemic situation. And then how about your strategy to rise up? And then uh, uh, in terms of the handling of pandemic, and then how about you apply a uh, new protocol in your hotel during pandemic? Thank you. Sorry, I always forget to un un unmute myself. Yeah, so uh, yeah, OK. Uh, very good question. Thank you very much for the previous question and this question as well. Um, yes. Uh, we had to change uh, uh, many things, and uh, and we have to be. Let me refer back to the last slide. Uh, we have to be creative uh, how to do things. So yeah, um, we have our safety measures uh, put in place. Uh, for example, um, really easy things: social distancing on reception, putting the screens up to protect ourselves, our staff. Behind the screen, they don't have to wear a mask, but uh, I have a mask with me as well because uh, I came into the hotel. Everyone comes into the hotel; they have to wear a mask. Uh, um, it doesn't matter if they if we're working over here or not. Uh, we um, taking temperatures uh, from our employee uh, employees, uh, and also with regards to the guests, uh, we have uh, uh, lifts. We have two lifts. Uh, one is uh, one is uh, one way up, the other one is one way down. So we have two lifts. So just to avoid uh, um, contamination with each other, um, we tried this strategy. Uh, it works during the, the the week, but it does not work unfortunately during the weekend because weekends are really busy. Um, we are a small hotel, but still we have 150 rooms. So. So, uh, yeah, we consider small because we have uh, bigger hotels over here, like uh, up to 300, 350 uh, rooms. So our one is like half a size, but still 150 rooms. Um, so normally on a weekend, we ask the guests to use the lift to go up and, and the staircase to come down because we have a huge main staircase and then they can come down. Our building is just three stories. So it's, it's not that uh, is not a big uh, uh, effort to come down even from the third floor. Um, with the regards to the rooms, um, uh, the rooms, all the touch points and everything being sanitized in the rooms. Uh, start with the TV remote to the AC control panel to the light panel uh, to the door handles. Everything has been sanitized by the housekeeping. Uh, team and the supervisor after checking the room sanitize uh, after herself. So once the room is done, none of the employees are uh, allowed to enter the room. So it means that uh, we give the key to the guest and it's their own space and we not enter in it. Unfortunately, we have to cope uh, with uh, the rooms not being serviced um, during a longer stay because normally we would service them on a daily basis, mate would go in and then would uh, tidy up the bed and things. We cannot do that. But we're advising guests and we're communicating it with them. And uh, they are accepting it and especially they are appreciating it because obviously they don't want anybody to enter their confined their own space. Um, this was about uh, the uh, I'm just trying to search for the question because I don't know if I missed any part of it or not. But, uh, uh, oh, oh, 
did I answer the question or uh, was there a part which I, uh, which I uh, forgot to answer? Yes, you did, sir. Yes, your question, the, the answer question. Yes. I did answer. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, sometimes, sometimes if there is a little bit longer question, I might miss a part of it, but just let me know and I will, I will try to answer the uh, best of my knowledge. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question, and then this is a good question. It's going to be the main problem of all uh, Indonesian. Uh, there is another question from Farel. Uh, he's from Kitchen 3B, and then he asking about language barrier uh, because, as we know, that uh, English is not our main language. So, how do you handle that? Okay, so I try to I try to talk about a little bit about the language barrier because I know from personal experience as well, but it was 15 years ago. So uh, loads of things uh, changed in, in Indonesia uh, since 15 years. But I know that when I went to uh, uh, my university uh, in uh, middle Sumatra, was uh, uh, only two person speaking English, um, two English teachers, and that's all. And of course, uh, the, the students, some of them, they, uh, they spoke some level of English. But uh, that was a, a hardship uh, to communicate to anybody. So, although it was really good, <laughs> although it was really good to learn Indonesian, uh, that was really good way to learn Indonesian because no one could speak English. So you you had you had your challenge to <laughs> to to learn Indonesian because otherwise you wouldn't be able to communicate. Uh, uh, but okay, with regards to the question, is. Um, uh, I suggest, and, and that was uh, one of my tips, uh, I suggest don't be afraid to use the language. Don't be afraid. Uh, you can do a couple of things uh, uh, to develop your language uh, skills. You can watch films uh, in English uh, with a subtitle, especially those films uh, which you already watched once. I don't know, I'm just saying something you, you like the Lord of the Rings, for example. You already watched it so many times that you know exactly what they're saying. Take your favorite film and then put it in English and put the subtitle on. And then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna read it. I mean, why are you listening to it? That's a really good way. Also, another good way, um, I'm pretty sure you as well, you have your favorite book or comic book or whatever, favorite book. Um, Let's uh, stop with the uh, Lord of the Rings, for example. If you read it in Indonesian or like Harry Potter or whatever it is, uh, I don't know what is uh, uh, famous now. Uh, we are going to stop with the Lord of the Rings. If you read it in Indonesian, uh, try to read it in, in English. And that's uh, because in that case, you can visualize uh, the, the bird, what, uh, what, you, uh, what, you, uh, what you already know. That's another tip. The, the, the other two, okay, the second one or third one, I don't know, I lost count now, is not to be afraid to use the language. If you say something wrong, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, because um, as I said earlier, they might uh, smile at you, but most importantly, they can understand you. You know how many times, uh, like I'm living in England 10 years, I'm talking to my friends, which are uh, native, uh, 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 English, and I um, always say, oh yeah, I forgot to take my daily vitamin. And they, you take it what? Because in England it's not vitamin, it's vitamin. And I am still keep saying the wrong thing, you know, because it, American is vitamin, English, vitamin. It's just like the schedule and schedule or other things are different and sometimes we i'm using different things uh, or pronounce it differently but they always correcting me and this is what i try to say that have uh, native friends uh, if you go abroad uh, try to have native friends uh, when i came to england i did not really speak uh, uh, english uh, on a level that i do now but uh, i had some basic knowledge from school and uh, obviously, I developed my my language skills over here, and uh, this is how how you can do best. Don't be afraid to talk. Try to talk uh, with natives, 
um, as I said, uh, from my personal uh, experience, I was in Sumatra, no one spoke English. What happened one day, we had a power cut, uh, and uh, I still remember I went to my ditch, my porch. Oh, back in the days of no Google and everything, yeah, okay. So no, 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 not, like, no, not like now, it was 15 years ago. So, okay, there was, but not on my phone, definitely. So I <clears throat> went to my dictionary and I said, okay, what is, do you have? And what is candle? And I still, uh, still remember, I went into uh, Varung uh, uh, in, in our campus and I could just say, Salamat Malam, Ada Lilin. That's all what I could say. And, and then they said, okay, so why you need uh, the candle? And like, yeah, okay, I mean, they knew why I need it, but like, okay. Like, and they tried to help me. And then they started to talk to me. And I was like, okay, I, I don't understand. Give me one second. And I ran away. And I took my notebooks and I took my dictionary and sat down. And with my dictionary and notebook, we started to talk. And after one, two weeks of this intensive course, from morning until night, like, okay, with like little uh, uh, breaks, I've been staying in the Warung with my friends and I was learning Indonesian. So when my uh, friend came back after two weeks from Jakarta, she was surprised that I spoke better Indonesian than she did after studying Indonesian in Moscow for three years. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is how you develop your English <laughs> as well. You can do that. Thank you for your advice, sir. I think that it will be uh, really, really helpful for our students. Uh, thank you for the next question. Uh, it's an interesting question from Kelly. And then she asked about how we could develop a better relationship with the colleague, especially when working abroad. I'm, I'm going to the question as well, yeah. yeah I'm going to repeat the question. And then she said that how we could develop a better relationship with colleagues, especially when working abroad. Thank you. Really good question, Kali. Thank you very much uh, for this question as well. Um, so, uh, if you have an, uh, a broad, uh, broad mind uh, sense, if you open your mind uh, to accept different cultures, and, uh, different uh, customs, then uh, you're going to be able to do so. If you are unsure, what is uh, customary in a, uh, in a different uh, culture or in a different uh, country, always asks. I would, uh, I would, I would go with this, always, always ask the person. Uh, for example, again, some personal uh, uh, um, uh, experience. My friends uh, in Sumatra were asked me to play badminton, okay? You are very good at it, guys. Yeah, I can admit. Um, and I played, played badminton with right hand, yeah, but I'm a left and I, I, I do everything with my left hand because I'm a lefty, but, but I played badminton with my right hand and we, we were playing for two weeks and they were like, you are not developing, what's wrong with you? And I was like, okay, because I'm a lefty, I, I have to play with my left hand, but I know that it's not a custom to use your left hand. And they said, you are an idiot, this is sport, you can do that. I was like, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. So we started to play with the left, of course, and I, and I got better and better. So this is the same thing with, with working with, uh, with other people uh, abroad. Don't be afraid to ask things because it took me two weeks to find out that actually in sport, because I was afraid to ask, in sport you can use your other hand, for example. It's just an example. The main thing is that um, if you go abroad, uh, try to... Try to have a little read uh, before uh, about the customs. Uh, try to uh, now we have amazing sources in Google, uh, on Google as well, but uh, YouTube. Uh, there are certain people talking about different customs, um, uh, what uh, what you have to or don't have to do or shouldn't do uh, in different country. Uh, don't forget, guys. Uh, for example, if you come to England, you don't ask for two beers. Okay, you ask for two beers. Okay, or two bottles of water, it doesn't matter. Okay, because this is something really rude. Okay, so I'm always, I'm always laughing uh, when, 
when I see people posing for, for pictures and just telling me to go really far, basically. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> in England, don't do that, okay? <laughs> so th these are little things, little customs, but you have to... Yes, Kelly, it is, I know. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, and so yeah, these are the little customs which uh, which uh, uh, which you have to learn and you have to put in practice. And then, with, obviously, with practice, with asking people, it's gonna uh, they're gonna help you out. So it's easy. Don't worry about that. It's an easy thing to work abroad uh, uh, and uh, and, uh, and get into the culture if you are willing to. Nice answer, uh, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have to adapt with the new culture whenever we are, and uh, that's a part of adaptation. And that's uh, because we're a human being, and then uh, we able to do that. Thank you, Pak Ryanzor. Uh, another question from Sobaratun. Uh, uh, look like she can wait. <laughs> she asking about the uh, things to be prepared for working abroad. Uh, what is uh, things that uh, we have to prepare for working abroad. Might be a uh, sample like visa or mentality or etc. Oh, um, so uh, I don't really know about. Uh, I know about a couple of things. I know about England. I know uh, since uh, since I have uh, my uh, better half in Indonesia, obviously. Uh, uh, um, on a certain point, uh, she would come over here, so I had to look into uh, a, a visa, working visa in England. Uh, I can say a couple of things about a working visa. Uh, it is kind of hard, and after uh, England uh, getting out from the EU, the, the, the rules will change. But uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter that it's uh, totally impossible. Um, if, uh, if you think about the working visas, uh, why I mentioned and why I wanted to mention to you guys the cruise ships. Uh, because working on a cruise ship, for example, uh, it's a really easy thing and you don't need a visa. Okay, you just need a landing visa to those countries uh, where, where, you, where you're going to, but the, but the cruise ship cannot take care of it. For example, it's just an example, okay? So they look after your visa things and then... Uh, and then with that, that is a really good opportunity uh, for um, South, uh, Southeast, even Southwest Asians to, to, to travel abroad and, and get some experience which they can use later on. Uh, I have loads of um, uh, Indian friends uh, whom, uh, whom are uh, used to work, uh, for example, a uh, night manager whom I mentioned, uh, that guy is from uh, India. Uh, my um, my uh, uh, um, other manager, my mentor, is um, is from India, and uh, and uh, they used to work on uh, cruise ships uh, because they first they could get a visa to come to England, but then uh, because of the uh, the experience of what they built up during the, the years or during a couple of terms on cruise ships, uh, they got uh, a better, uh, better um, a possibility to, 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 to get a working visa in, a, uh, in another country, such as England, for example. So, yeah, uh, this is one thing what you could prepare, um, like, uh, like visa. I think most of the preparation, guys, is, is a, it's a mental preparation, because uh, I know that uh, uh, you were asking is not only about mentality but uh, any specific problem. yeah I, I do understand it uh, but to be honest with you uh, when I came to to England uh, I came with uh, one uh, uh, big luggage uh, of uh, 25 kilos uh, to England uh, and I wrote so many useless things so many useless things uh, because I thought that I'm going to need it. No, you don't. Uh, you, you, uh, you need your determination. Of course, you need your paperwork. You need to be your paperwork to, to be done. You need your basic clothing. Uh, you uh, need your um, um, uh, computer to get uh, hold on to your family and to talk to them and to see them. 
or your phone, obviously, it's with you all the time. Uh, but uh, you don't really need anything. Uh, you need your bank card and uh, visa and basically your backpack of clothes, and that's what you need. You don't really need anything because during time, uh, you can get everything uh, for yourself, whatever you need. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to mentality. I'm so sorry about that. I know that you asked for not just about mentality, but that is the most important uh, to prepare yourself that you're not gonna see your friend and family for months, but maybe for years. So that is the most important to prepare to, because that is a really hard thing. Uh, uh, know where you go. Uh, I know that. Um, you guys are living in the tropics uh, next to the equator, you might be even mentally not prepared to come to uh, 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 a snowy, rainy, cold country, uh, which is, for example, England or rather uh, like uh, North America, it can be New York or... or the, they, we have different weather, for example. You have to prepare yourself for the weather as well. It's, it's, it's going to be totally different what you used to. So, yeah, of course, after you're preparing your goodies, like your paperwork and, 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 and your communication devices and your basic um, uh, necessities, I would say, then it is, still comes back to your mind to prepare. I think it's back to you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Sultan. I think we had enough questions, but we still have more time. Uh, I'm going to open another session, but for only one question, uh, if you'd like to ask uh, one question, please just uh, unmute yourself. And then oh, I think it's going to be better if you uh, put your question in the chat room first. And then I'm going to unmute you, and then you may ask the question by yourself. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm really open to open to an open discussion because, uh, guys, this is your opportunity to ask anything. I'm here. Uh, I'm here to answer as the best of the best to my knowledge. So, so uh, I'm really too happy to do so. So this is an opportunity which you which you shouldn't miss out if you have um, anything. <laughs> there is a new question from Brandon Hansen. Uh, uh, Hello, Mrs. Zoroltan. My name is Brandon from Kitchen for B class, and I uh, want to ask about how could we keep our professionality in any term and condition? That's hard. That's a good it question. It is hard. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. It is really hard. It is really hard. Uh, oh, e, listen, Brandon, this is a hard question, but uh, thank you. Uh, it is challenging, just as the people who, who you're going to deal with. Either your colleagues or your uh, guests or your employees or employers. It's it is oh, to to handle it professionally. Hmm. Okay. Uh, if you run into a difficult situation, my suggestion is try to try to stay as calm as you can. And. Uh, uh, Try to be, try to, okay, if, try to listen, okay? That's a really important thing. If you're handling a complaint, for example, um, if, you, if you're handling a complaint, listen. Because most of the people, and believe me, like half of the people, they just want to talk. They just want to talk. They had a bad day at work. Uh, they are going out now to, to a restaurant or they staying in a hotel, they had a bad work, they have family issues back home, who knows what. And then they want to talk it out. And once you put your listening ears on and you listen to them, you're going to understand if it's a genuine complaint because something is wrong uh, with the food, with the room, with something, or just a bragging, like just a talking. So put your listening ears on 
uh, be sure about your qualities. Like I'm in your hotel uh, or your restaurant. Be sure about what you do and how you do the procedures. And once you're sure about that, and if you can keep your calm, oh, believe me, it's some, really hard to do so. Sometimes I would be honestly liking to tell to people to, there's the door, okay? You don't have to come back, thank you. So, but we cannot. But this is, this is, these people are one in 1,000, okay? One in 1,000 who, who, who you would like to say that, okay, get out. Get out, I'm going to refund your, your hotel room and get out because I don't need you. This is one in 1,000. So, or even more, maybe. Uh, people are nice, uh, mostly. And if you're listening to them and you understand them, always listen, emphasize, be empathetic. Okay, try to understand them. Put yourself in the same shoes, in the same boat, and then you're going to understand them, uh, where they're coming from. Uh, for example, just a quick example, um, uh, our beds uh, are a little bit hard, okay? But it's, it's on a harder side, on a, on a, on a, on a stiff, sticker side, the mattress. Mattress is handcrafted and with the best materials, what you can imagine, but it's a little bit on the stiffer side. Uh, some people, they don't like it. They like the soft mattresses, for example. When they come in reception and, and asking or, or challenging you to do something about it, you cannot just say, okay, you listen to them. You are being empathetic. You're understanding what they say. But you cannot just say, yeah, these, these mattresses is what we have in the hotel. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. No, you can figure out things. I don't know. Um, put uh, under the mattress protector, you can put uh, two, uh, two large duvets, uh, put the mattress protector back on the sheet and everything, and it's going to be already a softer layer. For example, uh, once again, being creative. Okay? So use, use your knowledge. Use the knowledge of your, of your property. Uh, use your knowledge, your experience, um, what your teachers told to you. Uh, and and it's, it's hard to stay professional during challenging times and challenging periods. But, but if, you be, if you stay professional, uh, first of all, you're going to be appreciated by your colleagues. You're going to be appreciated uh, by your uh, company. But most importantly, you're going to appreciate yourself because it is a really good feeling when you run into a difficult situation and you dealt with it and then you have a coffee after uh, normally after the difficult uh, really, really difficult guest I just uh, uh, having a having a coffee um, or I don't want to advertise smoking, but I do smoke, so I'm just going out to, to have a cigarette and a coffee. But I feel good because I kept my calm and I kept professional. And this is the most important. This is the most important. Uh, just to keep your calm. Try to be. Uh, try to try to be uh, uh, as listening as you can and as understanding as you can, and then find a quick solution and. Find a solution, and what is important, agree on the solution. It doesn't matter if it's a complaining guest, if it's your boss or somebody else. Uh, get the challenge, listen to it, understand it, find a solution, and agree on the solution. Once you did this, you're going to uh, keep professional, and uh, you're going to be successful. Thank you, Brandon. That was a really good question. Very hard to answer. It is. Th yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zoltan, for this question. Uh, for the answer, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I think we already uh, answered all the questions. Um, 
is there anything else that you would you like to mention pak for closing for a closing statement well um yes i would like to uh, first of all i would like to thank the opportunity uh to talk to you guys because uh uh it is an unexpected opportunity i really enjoyed it i hope that i delivered something which is uh uh useful for you or useful for your future i uh, i really enjoyed it uh if i uh would have asked a question again if i would like to uh do uh, this session i would say yes you've been amazing uh, you had really good questions uh, on the on the uh, questioning session uh, i can see a couple of other questions and wow they are they are all good um but uh, thank you sara for uh, for for giving me the opportunity uh, thank you very much uh, kelly uh, thank you very much uh, Ida, to 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 do this and uh, and i'm saying to be an interpreter and to and to to help us uh, get through this session um and i really appreciate all of you guys uh, listening into this and uh, uh writing questions i uh, just wish you a lovely lovely weekend ahead and and i hope that i could uh, i can leave now uh, satisfied that i i i got something uh, to you guys and then uh, you you listen to something useful thank you very much Ma. uh i would like to uh, highlight uh, some points that <clears throat> There is uh, several uh, points that mm, make me want to discuss for uh, further more. Uh, first of all, and be flexible, and then be flexible to handling uh, every situation. And then that's the, what, uh, what you mentioned in your presentation. And then this is really, really important because I was there also. And then sometimes you cannot handle uh, the problem, uh, but you have to still thinking about the solution. That's why you have to be flexible. And then there's another uh, quote is don't be afraid to take a step back and then develop yourself. That I think is the best quote ever. <laughs> so for you guys, uh, for all my students, don't be afraid to take a step back and then develop yourself because hospitality is not only in the kitchen, hospitality is only in the restaurant area and it's not only uh, room, service, room service or uh, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, room division management. So there's a lot of things in hospitality industry that's why you do not be afraid to take a step back and then develop yourself. And before we end the station, uh, allow me to present a certificate for our key, uh, key speaker today. Uh, I would like to confirm with the Pak Ilham for the keynote speaker certificate. Are you ready? Ready, Pak. Ready. Okay. This is the certificate. Yeah. This is certificate. This is our present for you, Mr. Sultan, and uh, this is uh, on behalf of management of Akbar and Hai Bandung. Uh, we present you this certificate uh, for your corporation uh, and then for your collaboration with us. Uh, thank you for participating in today's guest lecture. We hope to see you again next time, and I will hand it back to Kelly. Please, Kelly. Uh, thank you very much. If I just uh, can say one thing. Uh, first of all, thank you very much much for this uh, lovely gift and surprise. I, I, would, uh, I would not uh, uh, expect it, but, but thank you ever so much. Uh, once again, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, there's one more thing uh, which I would like to say. Don't forget, guys, there is no I in team. Okay? So team, team, teamwork makes a dream work, and this is how we develop ourselves. And how are we getting uh, uh, successful in the industry? Thank you, Mr. Idam. As well, thank you, Mr. Zoltan, for your kind words today. Before we end the event today, we will take a group poll first, which will be guided by our operator, Mr. Ilham.
Who will take the photo now? Okay. Uh, Slide one. Can everyone turn on their camera, please? Okay. For uh, slide one. Ready. Okay, ready. One. one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. And then okay. for slide two. Uh, one. Two, three, yeah, and then slide three. One, two, three, yeah, enough. Thank you, Mr. Ilham, for taking our picture today. Thank you to our speaker today, Mr. Zoltan. Thank you so much for all the answers and as well as uh, today's uh, lecture. And of course, every more for attending today's guest lecture. Before you leave today's event, please fill the form for attendance list and survey for the presentation. We would appreciate if you would complete that and provide your feedback. On behalf of Akbar and Hai Bandung and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest day. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, semuanya. Thank you, thank you. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you, Zoltan. Thank you. Terima thank kasih. Thank you, Zoltan. Thank you. Thank you.